Corporate Board Member presents an informational webcast on this edition, Boardroom Liability at the Personal Level, with T.K. Kerstetter, President of Corporate Board Member, and Joseph E. Ehrlich, Executive Vice President, Owens Group. Welcome to Corporate Board Member's informational webcast. I'm T.K. Kerstetter with Corporate Board Member, and it's my pleasure to welcome my guest today, Joseph Ehrlich, who is the Executive Vice President of the Owens Group. And Joe, we have a great topic today. We're going to talk about boardroom liability at the personal level. And when you think about boardroom liability, you think of uh, the concern about protection that directors have on serving on the board. And you know that the corporation is going to have a program that's supposed to cover you and the D&O coverage. But there's a lot that's probably not discussed about the other options that people have. And that's what we want to think about a little bit today. But first, let me ask you, with all your travels and all the interaction that you have with directors, what is sort of the most common question or questions that you receive about uh, directors' liability? There really are a lot of questions that we get about the DNO policy in particular, and uh, the the facet that people focus on most is their own personal liability. Uh, as you know, when you serve on a board of directors, you actually serve with full personal liability. So you have the protection of the DNO policy that's in place. You have whatever indemnification is offered uh, by the company. But if those safeties fail, then you're really standing on your own, and you're talking about your car your house, your savings account that are at risk. So that's really the focus of most people's concern. What happens if? Will I be protected if? Um, and those are, the, uh, those are the things we really spend a lot of time talking about with individuals, making sure that the program that's in place at the company adequately protects them, that the limits are adequate for the risk that they're taking. Uh, and also, we really try and focus on will the coverage be there when you need it. And both from a company and an individual, you want to have that comfort that you're protected so that you can put that issue aside and get on to the business at hand. That's really a great point. I mean, if you have a boardroom full of people that are worried about what happens when I make this decision, what are the repercussions going to be, am I going to get sued, is my name going to be in a lawsuit, and are my assets going to be at risk? Um, it, it takes away from their ability to, to concentrate on the job at hand and to really do the job at hand. Boardrooms are full of hard decisions, people making decisions about cutting jobs, closing plants, um, and other strategic decisions that put them in the, the, the line of fire. Um, and they need to know when they make those decisions that they're actually going to be protected at the end of the day. So as a corporate director, I'm I'm probably familiar with the traditional DNO that's offered by the company, but what other forms of protection in the way of coverage um, are out there that I should be aware of? It's really a, it's an exciting time in, in the DNO world. We really have a, an incredible number of products that are available to the to the end consumer, and they can really be tailored to the particular needs. If you take a look at it, the way that a DNO policy is structured is it protects the officers of the company. It protects the directors, both those that are uh, insider directors and the independent directors, and it also covers the corporation in case the corporation gets brought into the to the lawsuit. We can provide solutions that will um, take care of any or all of those entities. So at the most uh, at the most simple level, you can always just buy more limits. You can buy an excess DNO policy, and that would uh, cover all the same constituencies that we were just talking about. But you can also get more uh, granular in your protection. You can protect the officers and the directors, you can protect just the directors, and you can protect just the individual uh, directors. You can even just protect one individual. And why would, why would that be a concern to me? What's the issue on why I would have to be worried as an individual director when I'm 
just a normal part of the group? Well, there are really a lot of reasons uh, why you might have concern. For example, most DNO policies, the way that they're the way that they're constructed, if one of the insiders in the corporation that's filling out the DNO application makes misrepresentations or material omissions, when it comes time for that DNO policy to to be used, you might find that the carrier rescinds the policy, and they actually do that on a regular basis, where they say we really didn't understand the risk that we were getting involved in. We were lied to, and so they uh, they pull the policy and return the premium. Uh, additionally, you can worry about other constituencies using up all the limits that are available before it gets to you. For example. Uh, Independent directors may very well be concerned that a lawsuit involving the officers and the insiders of the company would come before the directors, uh, the independent directors, would ever be brought into a lawsuit. And it may wind up that by the time they get brought in, there are no limits available for them. In other words, they've used up all the money protecting the corporation. Nothing is left for the individual directors. That's correct. And that's called. Uh, that would just be depletion of limits. That would be exhaustion of the policy. And, um, and in a policy, that's a side A. Is that what they call a side uh, A? No, a side A. That would be a, a normal DNO policy. A side A policy is similar. A, a side A policy just protects. So as we were saying, you have the different constituencies. If you cut out just the corporation and you leave just the directors and officers, both uh, the independent and the insider directors and officers covered, that's called side A. If you just cover the independent directors, solely that's an independent director liability policy and then when you get down to the to the individual director that'd be called a personal directorship liability policy so if i was interested in the individual um, type of situation is that something traditionally that i would have to cover myself or is that part of the mix in the normal risk that a company would do well, the, the company is going to do some of it, and there may be a point in time when the company says, this is what we're doing, and then you'd be forced to make your own decision. Typically, if you're looking at covering uh, a number of directors and officers and or officers, actually, uh, you're going to look to the company to pay. So if you're looking at an independent director liability policy, which may be covering four or five, six, whatever number of independent directors there are on the board, you would typically look to the company to pay for that on behalf of the independent directors. When you look at the individual policy, you're probably going to be paying for that yourself, which makes a lot of sense. Those policies, uh, in addition to protecting just the one director and separating him or her from the other directors in terms of uh, a separate limit and also separate responsibility for not triggering any of the exclusions under the policy, um, you're, you're able to, to structure those policies so that they not only cover board A for that, uh, for that director, but may also cover boards B, C, D, and E, which uh, other directors from company A wouldn't be on. Well, <coughs> remembering my experience on a public board and, and the interaction I have with others, there's never we're never experts on all the protections and what happens, um, and particularly in light when you move away from the traditional. So um, if I was a director today, what questions should I be asking, particularly when, it, when you look at those protections that are not traditional? You know, it's a great question, and I think there are a lot of things to, to be looked at. My recommendation to any board member would be to get the broker in, ask them questions, have them do a presentation to you on what the program that the company is proposing to put in place looks like with an emphasis on the exclusions, issues like severability and rescission, uh, and then take it, from, take it from there. If that feels adequate, uh, that's the end of the inquiry. If it's not adequate, you may want to look to your own broker or a separate broker for the board to advise you on some of these other policies. Um, it, it's not going to be a one-size-fits-all for any corporation, so it's important to really engage in the, in the process and make sure that at the end of the day, you're satisfied with the answers, because as we said, it's your assets that are going to be on the line. 
I know uh, you're a lawyer as well, so if I'm in this situation, is that should I be conferring with my lawyer if this was the kind of situation that I wanted to make sure that I was protected? Uh, that's, that's often a, a great idea. We regularly work with lawyers in crafting the solution for any given company. Uh, usually we are brought in by the, the corporation and the attorney is brought in by the corporation in, in that situation. But if you have your own personal attorney that you work with, uh, running it by them is probably, uh, is probably a good idea as well. Um, knowing that there's probably not a lot of people um, that are familiar when you get down to the granular individual, um, just summarize some of the benefits that are important about that uh, sort of more specific coverage. Yeah. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about independent director liability coverage and personal directorship liability uh, coverage. Where they're both similar, they're focused on uh, those independent directors that are on the board, either collectively or individually. They tend to have no rescission, meaning that the company can't later say, we didn't know what we were, what we were getting into and pull the, the policy out uh, from under you. Uh, additionally, they usually have full severability of content, uh, um, of conduct. A and what that means, uh, TK, is if you were to do something terrible on a board which would compromise your coverage, it wouldn't compromise mine. And that's very important to, to make sure that each individual uh, director really stands on his own merits. You don't know what other directors are doing. You don't know what secrets uh, they're hiding any more than you know what the CEO and the CFO are doing. So at this point in time, again, given that it's your personal assets that are on the line, it, it makes sense to, to take a look at a policy that's really going to be there for you no matter what anyone else did. The difference between the personal policy and the independent director policy is that the personal policy you don't even share with the other independent directors. Even with a, an IDL policy, independent director policy, if you buy a $5 million policy and that policy pays out $5 million for uh, director A, B, or C over there, there's not going to be anything left for you. That really can't happen with a personal directorship liability policy. It's going to be you. You're going to be the only person who has the right to access those limits. Well, um, we know that it's very important whether you're in the traditional product, whether you're in these um, alternative products, to make sure that you make yourself comfortable so that this is not an issue on a regular basis. And uh, Joe Ehrlich, I want to thank you for joining us and giving us your knowledge on uh, this webcast. And that will conclude um, this informational webcast. We hope that you will join Corporate Board Member again when we'll take a look at another topic that sort of helps you understand your role as a director and make you a better committee member. We'll see you then. Joseph Ehrlich can be reached at jehrlich at owensgroup.com. This has been a presentation of Corporate Board Member, an NYSE Euronext company.